Um, with small groups, oftentimes the percussion, the, particularly the battery, stick out of the texture. And the, the biggest reason first is usually the, the battery instruments are tuned too high. And it's our activity now in big ensembles, they have to cut through so they, I mean, you'll hear the, the drum cores with the, the tuning of the snare very, very high so that it cuts through. In a small group, that's a blend issue the whole show. So you want to use the, the you want to tune the drums lower than you would tune for a bigger ensemble. Blend is the mo time and blend is the most important thing for the, the percussion. And, the mo and that's, the, you, that's usually the problem with battery percussion in a small group. And the, is the blend and the balance of the ensemble. So make sure that the tuning is lower. Preferably on snare, and, and the kids probably aren't going to like it at first, but Mylar instead of Kevlar. But if you're going to use a, a Kevlar head, tune the, kev the top head really, really low use a mylar on the bottom and tune it up as high as you can get it. That will make a, a, a big sound that the kids will feel that it's you know, pleasing to their ears, but it'll also be a sound that'll most likely blend in with the group if they're playing the right volume. Does that make sense? So that's super, super important. And, and you'll get, as a band director, sometimes you get used to hearing something that's wrong and sometimes we get used to hearing percussion. We're all guilty of it. We'll get used to hearing percussion, the balance too loud or the blend wrong, and then go to a show and get called out for it. So that, that's the first thing with percussion, making sure the blend is there. Battery should be staged behind the, the instruments that are playing in the front as much as possible. Try n never to get the battery on the side of the woodwinds and brass. What, number one, it's probably going to face. Number two, it, there's no way it'll be blended. Okay? That's just not going to happen. The wind, like if you just have a 40-piece band or even a, an 80-piece band, it's, going to, it's definitely going to be a blend issue as well as, as most likely a timing issue. All right? So keep, wh wherever the focus is musically, keep them in the pocket. And so if the, you, you have the battery back, that last battery player, if you take your drill chart and draw a 45 degree angle, anybody outside of that 45 degree angle is probably phasing. They're probably playing behind the beat. So keep them in the pocket. Make your drill rider do that. Keep them focused on that aspect of it so that one, they're blended, and two, it's in time. And of course, uh, careful with the balance. I used only a pit for about 80% of the show when I, when I opened the school and so that I wouldn't have those blend issues. And we used them a little bit just so they would get that training in the first year because I knew we would have a battery in the second year. But we sounded the best when we just had pit. <laughs> Does that make sense? So, um, but I really needed to train them for, uh, for the next year. But if I was at a small school and I knew my numbers weren't going to jump, I, I would do just a front ensemble. And um, Tarpon Springs, some years had a really small group, still were, would be a finalist at BOA Grand Nationals. And they would, most years I believe, if mm -hmm. not every year, every. they use just a pit. And it just really helps with balance and blend. So. Two things I'll add with that too is, again, that was a big concern with us was the percussion of that year when we knew we had two snares, one one tenor drum and four bass drums, even though more kids wanted to do that, and we had to move them to the pit. That was a part of our design process. Do we really do a percussion feature? How much color can you create with that? How much, I mean, you know what I mean? Was it, I look at everything that we make a decision with, visually, musically, there's a cost and there's a benefit when we make a choice. You know, so we're trying to design the show. Do we really have enough horses and enough people to really present enough color to waste a minute and a half on a drum solo? You know, and to us, we always come like, there's a lot more cost because we can't be creative enough with that than doing that to get something in reward. Not that we didn't create small little features, you know, they had their 16 counts or their 32 count little, you know, within the productions we were doing, but I don't, I still understand to this day why so many people feel they have a need to have to do a drum solo, especially in this activity where the, it's not 
you know, the DCI thing has a specific percussion caption, this one doesn't, why there's always such a need, and if you do, you better be doggone good to do it. So that was one of the things, you know, that we really had to think about too over the course of the years that we were together was what do we really have to use? And Glenn made a great comment too. Um, I did a, a show a couple years ago, actually up in your way, up in Erie, that uh, this, this one band came out, had one snare, I think like one tenor, and maybe two bass drums on the field, or maybe only one. And, when, and we did this little clinic thing afterwards, and the guy came in to me, and he said, well, what would you do to make them better? I said, take all the drums off the field. Take them off. What can you do with just one bass drum up there? If you can put four down front, and that person could be playing four colors, why not, like Tarpon has done? You know, Tarpon's really, really done a great thing in terms of you know, bringing the percussion off the field and making it work. So those are just really smart choices you have to think about, and how do you use what you have to its greatest potential, so. What about putting a whole pit in the back? There, that's, again, there's choices. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. A lot of it's gonna be based on your show design and what the music dictates. We're gonna show you one where the, the ensemble is in the back, you know, and they use it to help cut the field size down, but then again, depending what you wanna do, I mean, it really has to come, you've gotta look at that pr product as a whole before you make the decision where they're gonna be. That's, that's my gut feeling on that, you know. I think there's a big risk, and some teams have found out last year about taking that pit on the field but putting them over by the 30 or 35 yard line. I think there's a danger in that, me personally. I think one, from a pulsing standpoint, because that rhythm section's are here and your band's always here, and how do you really make something visually look like it's working well together if it's always separate? And the one group that I remember in particular last year, and I know I was the visual guy judging, I never felt like there was a good musical blend ever because it was always, they never took the band over here with them, so it was always pit over here, and especially with all the electronics today, I was always hearing electronics and then the brass and winds all the time. And I'm sure it was not it together most of the time. Yeah. So I think it's okay. I think there's more okay to have it front and back. I have, unless you've got a speaker system that can hide all that, you know, unless you really have the money to move the speakers around and make it work. But. The advantage of having it backfield is that you have a lot less timing errors. When you yeah. just have a pit and no battery, the yeah. thing that we struggled with all season in that first year of the school was just playing together uh, because the kids were listening to the mm -hmm. front, of course. And the groups that put them, say, real small groups that put them on the front hash, but centered on the front hash, don't have those timing issues and it blends better. A lot of groups have had success with that. If it's balanced properly, you know, and, it, and it, good mallet selections, good writing, uh, it, you could make a small group sound really good. If, if I had it to do over again, that's exactly what I would have done. I would have put the, the pit back there. Mm -hmm.